What is going on guys? Today I thought I would do something special and review the last 10 movies I watched before I started doing movie reviews and rank slash review them in a short and sweet video because I wrote a few notes on my thoughts about them but not enough to make a video about them each individually. So without a further ado, let's get started. The worst movie on this list is Robin Hood. I was one of the few people who was actually looking forward to watching this movie. The trailer kind of intrigued me, and with such a great cast, I thought that it would be great. But sadly, this isn't a very good movie at all. It was very boring, the action didn't particularly look good, the movie looked like a CGI mess, and the story was very bland. Some things happened for no reason at all. I didn't really find myself caring for any of the characters either. I'm not a very big fan of how the action sequences were edited. There were a lot of choppy and slow motion shots and sometimes the camera would shake and switch shots too much and overall it'd just be really uncomfortable to watch. At least the movie was unintentionally funny. I'm going to rate Robin Hood a D. Next up on the list, Fantastic Beasts Crimes of Grindelwald. As a big Harry Potter fan, I neither liked or hated this film. It was very messy, dragged on for way too long, and I felt like not much happened during the course of this movie. I think I liked the first installment much better, but I think this movie had some really stunning visuals, and I really liked Dumbledore and also revisiting Hogwarts. This movie relates back to Harry Potter much more than the previous film, and I think that somewhat makes up for it. Otherwise, this would be a pretty terrible movie. <laughs> I'm going to rate this movie a C. The Kid Who Would Be King. This movie was somewhat entertaining, and I enjoyed where the story led me. The best part of this movie wasn't the visuals or the story, it was the relationship between the main characters. We see that the bullies slowly become friends with the two main antagonists, and this whole arc is carefully realized. The story is messy, and I think the movie is a bit too long. But I think this movie is really good at teaching people how to work together. It sends a stronger message to the younger audience. Though subtle, it is there. The antagonist was the weakest link in the movie because she only appeared in brief instances and then only once towards the very end. Overall, this movie is nothing too special. If you are expecting it to be epic and have amazing visuals, then you will be most likely disappointed. But if you, like me, go into the theater and not really expect much and let the story take you wherever it wants to take you, then I'm sure you'll have a pretty enjoyable experience. I'm going to rate this movie a B-. minus. Number 7, Aquaman. This movie was fairly entertaining. It was very over the top, sometimes messy, and some sequences and comedic instances were quite cringeworthy. But for what it is, it is a pretty solid film. The action was great, especially in 3D. It had some really stunning visuals, and I feel like they did a really good job at fleshing out the Black Manta character, making you kind of care for him. His character arc was fairly short and left us hanging, but the end credit scene really got me pumped for his return in the sequel. Although, the origin story of Aquaman was a bit too rushed for my liking. The best scene for me would be when Aquaman was fighting Black Manta in Sicily. I really liked the laser beam effect around his eyes. This film was predictable and highly unrealistic, but that is to be expected. It was also very loud. I rate Aquaman a B. Number 6, The Mule. This was a great movie, really good directing and acting. The story wasn't messy and it was very slow paced. I'm not a big fan of slow paced movies, but in this situation it worked. I enjoyed the storytelling because it was unique. The movie knows how to be suspenseful even without any music or actions. I really liked how the theme of family matters is explored and that it is consistent throughout the whole movie. You learn how Earl has neglected his family time and time again and always puts work first. Then after the struggles of being a drug mule, he starts to learn and starts putting family matters first then they choose to accept him. Unfortunately, the ending really let me down though because it was so anticlimactic. The movie does an excellent job of building up the story and the characters with the unique relationships that they have. You would think that it would end in an epic finale, but sadly, this is not the case. I'm going to rate The Mule a B+. Next up, we have Glass. I have mixed feelings about this movie. I don't know if I loved it or hated it. 
The twist in the end, once fully unraveled, left me feeling empty inside. I was speechless at the end, but I'm not sure if that was in a good or bad way. Either way, I think I enjoyed this movie. There are many, many things to love about this movie. And I think the direction that this movie takes either leaves people loving it or disappointed by it. The performances of everyone in the cast were amazing, and best of all, it stays true to the intents of Split and Unbreakable. It relates more to Unbreakable though, because the movie was very slow paced for the most part. A lot of people complain that there's not too much David Dunn in this movie. I personally don't mind that because I feel like he had his movie. Glass is more about Mr. Glass and I feel like it does that justice. I like this movie more than Unbreakable, but not as much as Split. Definitely not as much as Split. I loved Split. I think that was an amazing movie and I might review that in the near future. I'm going to rate Glass a B plus. Bumblebee. I'm so glad to finally see our good Transformers movie. I think this is easily one of the best, if not the best, Transformers movie. I enjoyed the story of Bumblebee a lot, as well as the character development between the protagonists. We learn a lot about who they are through the story, but sometimes things that happen are very impractical. But then again, it is just a movie. I feel like they didn't celebrate the antagonists enough. The end fight scene was very short. And then there was the military subplot again, which was pretty meh. But I love that this was a direct prequel to the Transformers universe. All in all, this was a very fun movie. I'm going to rate Bumblebee an A-. Number 3, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Although I prefer the first film more, I still thoroughly enjoy this movie. My favourite thing would be the references. They are very clever with the way they implement this into the movie because it relates to real life situations. I also really like the relationship development between Ralph and Vanellope. Through the first movie and this one, you really learn to care for these characters and some situations between them were quite emotional. However, there's barely an antagonist and there also isn't a plot twist, both of which I loved in the first movie. The story is a bit messy and there are not as many characters. It kind of just focuses on the journey of Ralph and Vanellope. And while that isn't a bad thing, I find myself missing the characters of the arcade. And I like them more than the characters of the internet. I also miss seeing Felix. His screen time was hardly any. His character arc was near to none. And I wish we would have seen what happened to him and his wife all these years. Overall, this is an amazing movie. Even though it has its obvious flaws, the humour is still there and I think it sends a really positive message to kids about friendships. While Ralph Breaks the Internet doesn't live up to the reputation of the first film, it is still a really enjoyable movie. Record Ralph is probably my favourite animated movie of all time, so it'd be pretty hard to top that one. I'm going to rate Ralph Breaks the Internet an A-. Next up, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I had an absolute blast watching this movie. The art style was truly amazing. And this movie was surprisingly emotional, especially between Miles, his dad, and his uncle. However, the story captivated me right until the middle of the movie. I'd say this movie was a solid A+, until they introduced the other characters of the Spider-Verse. From then on out, it becomes slightly messy and too over the top. Otherwise, this would have been a perfect movie. I'm going to rate this movie an A. And number one goes to Creed 2. I almost didn't see this movie because I had no interest in boxing. I never watched any of the Rocky movies or the first Creed movie before I decided, you know what, let's watch this movie and see why the hell everyone loves it so much. So to prepare for it, I watched the first Creed the day before and absolutely loved it got me really pumped for this movie. This was a sensational movie. I walked out of the theater really happy. I loved Creed because it was not just about the boxing. I actually loved those parts too, but it's much more than that. Michael B. Jordan and Sylvester Stallone did amazing jobs, and the acting really made me believe in those characters. Even the antagonists were exceptional. This is the type of movie that connects to the audience in a much more deeper and emotional level, and I couldn't ask for more in a movie. It's a really close call, but I think this movie is slightly better than the first one. 
because it celebrates the antagonist much more, making you care for both sides. I'm going to rate Creed 2, you guessed it, an A+. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like the video if you liked it, and leave a sub to help grow the channel. Also, please leave a comment. I'm interested to hear other people's thoughts on any of these movies. Also, please check out my previous video. Until next time.